All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone, to Good Game Ham Radio. This is the live stream. I'm Steve, K5ATA. And, well, obviously, I'm your host today. Um, get a couple of the obligatories out of the way first. First, thank you all for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, as many of you all know, I am a middle school teacher. I teach computer science and STEM. And as a result, I, I don't guess as a result, but as a benefit, I get to teach two class periods of amateur radio to some of my classes. Um, woo, you see me. I feel special now. Eh? Um, but anyway, what I was saying is we, we are running a club. We're trying to run a club. Yeah, I do miss the ape dance song. We could try to do the ape dance song. Are we just saying, you know, it's the end of the world as we know it, but I don't sing it nearly as well. Um, anyway, so we're trying to run a club, and anybody who knows anything about public schools, we have itty-bitty budgets, so there is a Patreon link down below. If you feel so inclined to help support our club, um, I would greatly appreciate it. That just it helps us out, and if you maybe have some extra equipment for that you're willing to donate for kids and whatnot to use radio, you know, hit me up on the email. We can certainly work that out. A couple of y'all I talked to last week about that, and we do appreciate that. Um, next thing, there is an Amazon affiliate link down below. Stuff that we have in the shack or in the school club, or maybe just some stuff that I came across that I thought was cool. You can click that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It does help us out a little bit. We get a itty bitty percentage of that and next thing is there is merch let me change my window here all right so if y'all would you can head over to wrong one there we go head over to grapevineamateurradio.com and you can check out the youtubers bunch merch um, you get the YouTubers Buds t-shirt, the X-Commander, mine, score, Bob K6UDA, and the awesome Smoking Apes shirt right there. So um, head over there, check that out. I guess it would be easier for you to check that out if I weren't so big. There you go. So that's that. Um, head over there, check it out. Good stuff. And thanks to um, Ham Radio 2.0 for getting all that set up. It's much appreciated. Somebody in the chat, if y'all would, throw that link out there for them, too. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, one last thing. Yeah, that ape shirt is sweet. Um, one last thing is the ads that show up before videos. Um, YouTube creators don't really get to pick the ads that show up, so don't just assume that just because you see an ad before one of our videos or something like that that we necessarily support that company. It doesn't mean we don't support them. But I'm just saying, don't don't those two things aren't really correlated. They're not associated. So just because you know somebody may have an ad before my video saying, "Hey, go here and pay ten or twenty dollars to learn how to program a Baofeng," doesn't mean that I support that. So, um, but you know there are some that I probably do support on there. So just saying, um, take note of that. That's about that. Uh, let's see who we have here in the chat so far. Oklahoma, howdy, howdy. Andy, yep, WJ6F, you were first. Mike Ape, Andy, Sandra, good to see you. Clark's in the house. I think the gang needs their own theme song before each video. Yeah, you know, and I know a guy who apparently can play guitar pretty well. Um, uh, Mike. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a good idea. We ought to have our own little song. That'd be kind of cool. I got a nasty gram from someone who didn't like seeing Biden before one of my videos. Yeah, Biden's all over the place on YouTube right now. So, um, you know, that's kind of the – and we've talked about it, some of us, about how that's kind of the the thing, I guess, is everybody's associating it with it. You know, because it's in front, they're like, oh, yeah, well, this guy obviously supports this. I should go give this other dude 10 bucks to learn how to program a fang, and you can find that on – you know, 872 different YouTube channels for free. Um, one last thing, actually two last things, and they're, they're kind of sort of related. Got me a new little coffee cup. It's, I entered a, commented on a radio oddity post on Twitter or something, and apparently I got drawn as the winner, so I got a radio oddity coffee cup, um, which 
if you could actually see it in CW, it says, well, you can't see it, it doesn't look like, it says radiodity. Hang on, let me go ahead and test it out. All right, um, and then the last thing that is kind of sort of related, and I just think it's a cool little gizmo. Got to get my keyboard out of the way because I got to change cameras. Because I've had several comments lately about my caffeine intake, so where is it? Turn that off. All right, so yeah, you'll notice it's not a, an Apple Watch. Sorry, Mike. That is my number of cups of coffee per day. So apparently it had a little app in there. Apparently it's been there the whole time. I didn't. I don't recall putting it there. But since I'm drinking this one, I'm going to count it now. And there you go. So 23 cups is what it says. That's 1,840 milligrams of caffeine. So I should be doing okay. Um, cool little gizmo. I don't know if you Apple Watch people have that option. Somehow I doubt it. So... All right, um, tonight we are talking about um, emergency communication stuff. Now, before we get started, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's not all MCOM groups or whatever are created equally, um, and not everything that people believed we needed um, several years ago are necessarily as necessary now. So I'm just putting that out there. You don't have an Apple Watch, so... Yeah, it probably is 8-ounce cups, which means I'm way over that. I need to see if I can calibrate that 8, because I think this thing's probably 16. And then my big one that my honey got me for Christmas, that's that's got to be 24 ounces. That that dude's a beast. Um, dude, you, I got this watch on eBay or something for like 70-something bucks or something like that. It, was, it wasn't too bad. T.O., what's up? Um, anyway, so um, MCOM stuff. So this is not something just to like you know chap everybody's hide and whatnot. Um, everybody knows, depending on the organization you're talking about, there are different degrees of how should we put it politely um, credibility, I guess. So one of the first things I want to bring up, if I can change my window, is Skywarn. I'm gonna probably make myself a little smaller as well. I'm big enough as it is. Okay, so Skywarden, like like normally, I do like to uh, keep these things kind of interactive. People in the chat, if you've got experience with something that I talk about, or maybe something I don't talk about, throw it out there and we'll talk about it. Because you know, I'm not the only dude who knows something about something in the room. So, um, but Skywarden, Skywarden is basically you know storm spotter program, and you can get certified, certified. I use that term loosely to be a storm, storm spotter online. Um, you can go to in-person classes, although I doubt you can go to one right now, because um, you know you might get closer than six feet and infect everybody, and then it'll be the end of the world as you know it. Um, but this is a good way, and this is one of the ways that a lot of people initially get into ham radio. That's one of the things I've started doing right away. Is you know Skywarn. I lived in Texas, um, North Texas, up around the Plano Frisco area 20 some odd years ago and anybody who knows anything about Texas <clears throat> they get tornadoes pretty often so I was like um, sounds like fun and Clark I just saw your comment yeah I sleep like a baby man I can go in there and put my head down and boom I'm there so it doesn't take me long at all to, to fall asleep it's caffeine kind of has doesn't really have an effect on me anymore I'm kind of immune I think which is why I need to get Death Wish coffee. Um, but anyway, this is a great way for people to get involved, assuming you have a decent group in your area that does this kind of stuff. Um, I live now, I live in Mississippi in the Oxford area, and the Oxford Club has a small little, I wouldn't call it a Skywarn group. They, they get on the radio and basically report conditions as they come across. Um, there's a DMR. National Weather Service channel that they get onto. Um, but nowadays, at least in the county I'm in, and I'm actually the emergency coordinator for the county, there is no Skywarn group because our county EOS um, emergency director uses the volunteer fire department for that, which I'm also on the volunteer fire department. So, you know, it's kind of one of those 
you've got the guys out there watching for storms who, if there's actually something that happens, they need to stop watching the storms and they can respond to an incident. Not the best situation, in my opinion, but you know that's why I get paid all the big bucks for being a teacher and not making those decisions. So, but if you're interested in Skywarn, um, you like looking at weather and chasing weather. In fact, we had a pretty good storm come through here earlier, and I was a wee bit concerned that we might not have power and or internet to stream tonight, but it worked out okay. My, my trash can did blow across the street, but that's about it. Um, you can learn about that going to weather.gov slash skywarn. I'll put all these links down below in the description. Um, they're not there right now, but they will be later. But, you know, you can go here. It tells you how to go through the program. And I've actually got a video that I put out on how to do the certification. And I'll put that wherever up there um, afterward. So, Smoking Ape is a Skywarner. So, and, you know, I like I said, I'm certified in it. It's just we don't really use it heavily here. As, as a younger guy, I had a great time in Texas chasing tornadoes um, until I got stuck in that cornfield across from one, which was a little little sketchy but it didn't get us so we're good so um one thing i want to go ahead and start or kind of throw in here and i'll throw it in here earlier rather than later it's good to know you feel fine because it is the end of the world so let me see let me change my all right turn that off turn that on okay i'm not i'm intentionally not i cut this off before the uh or after the person's name and call sign, and it's it's off of somebody else's blog, and I purposely didn't cite what blog that is. If this is your blog and you want me to put that there, you know, I'll put it down below. Um, more than happily, just shoot me a message. But I didn't because I didn't want to generate a bunch of hate for this dude. But this is the kind of person that, in my opinion, puts a monkey wrench into any emergency communication stuff that we have the opportunity to do. The fact of the matter is, nowadays more and more agencies are not really utilizing amateur radio for MCOM stuff. I mean, you know, my fire radio, this thing is pretty stinking reliable. I do understand that these things can go down. I mean, I've run this thing over with the fire truck, the squad truck, and it's no worse for wear. Um, but, you know, the system itself, it can go down. Um, but if this is the attitude of the normal person that shows up to help out I'm just saying this might not be the uh, the example you want to set and you're right Glenn hey Glenn good to see you man um, I met Glenn when was that Glenn last well it was on field day on field day and did a little videoing about uh, D rats and whatnot so and you're right there's a big difference between being in Skywarn and being a storm chaser um, Skywarn is basically, you know, hanging out at the house reporting conditions. Um, back 20 some odd years ago, it was people went out to different points. And in fact, that's the way they run it in my county right now. We go out to different spots and, you know, like one of them is the boat ramp and we look across the, the lake kind of thing. They've got preset spots they want people at. So while well, you're not chasing storms anymore necessarily, back then, you know, a lot of folks were out there kind of trying to follow the, the tornado, so to speak, So, um, which that leads to the warning. If you follow a tornado and you get sucked up in it and get dead, I warned you, don't do that. Um, but anyway, let's not be this dude. Okay, don't be the one that says I shouldn't have to justify anything to anybody. You know, it says I'm supposed to be professional, and it don't say professional on my license. We won't even get into the grammar there. But just saying, um, you know, you have to have a good attitude no matter what agency or what group it is you're going to go in to and work with. So if that's the attitude you have walking in, don't be surprised if that agency's like, yay, yeah, good to meet you. Um, we'll give you a call. And you never hear anything again. Um, uh, let's see, got some ape sky one. Is that a new Star Wars character? It could be a new Star Wars character. A uh, similar thing happened to me. Don't go chasing with someone from the Severe Storms Lab who wants to see how large the hail gets. So, yeah, like I said, I was I was young and dumb back then, but I lived through it. But just keep that under under advisement. Um, also know that not everybody necessarily welcomes every everybody into their um, storm watching or their Skywarn groups. 
Um, in fact, I don't know if the audio will play or not. Y'all just tell me if it doesn't stream the audio through. VK2 FSRV slash 5, uh, coming over across to Wichita Falls of Sky One Operations, handout from OUN on uh, uh, KB5 LLI. Okay, FRV, we went through this a year or two ago. I do not want to hear you transmit on this frequency. We have a closed net. We have spotters out and deployed. Uh, you're more than welcome to listen and report on 255. KD5 INN, net control for the Wichita County ARES. So, all right, so you've got audio. Good. Thanks, Tim. So we don't necessarily need to hear the whole thing, but just know that there are groups out there that, you know, you can be out there and seeing softball size hail, and if they don't necessarily want your report, um, I don't get that mentality myself. But you know, it's not like, and there may be more more backstory to this than we know, but. You know, it's it's unless it's an activated like racy's thing or something like that, then I mean it's just a regular Skywarn net. Technically, I don't. We won't get into all that. So, um, if you want, yes, the AWRL even has a book that you can buy about store and spotting with amateur radio. I think there's actually a version too. Not that I'm saying I buy this. There's great information on the internet. I just thought it was funny. Um, another group is U.S. Racy's. Um, Racy's. If you kind of look at it, this this seems like the big deal that they like to talk about. You have one of those there, a Racy's group, or one of those groups, T.O., that doesn't like other folks in there. So, you know, my personal belief is if people want to go volunteer and they're not turd nuggets, then let them volunteer. I mean, you know, they're bringing stuff. Yeah, I know it shocks you that the a ARL has a book. Um, they've got two, apparently. So, not that I've read them, but, you know, there's a link in the National Weather Service webpage to bring up and report. And you're right, there is a link in there, and there's actually, like, I think there's an app for it, too. And there's, like, a phone number you can call. Once you get certified through the system there, they, um, you get the little, well, it teaches you all that stuff through the certification thing. So, now, Racy's has always been kind of stay out, but, you know, Aries, Aries ain't Racy's, you know. Throw that grammar out there for Mike. But um, the Racy's thing, their big claim to fame or whatever is, you know, if if El Presidente decides to invoke the War Powers Act, they can still talk. So why book when there's YouTube? Exactly. Why pay 10 bucks to program a thing when you can, you know, find it on a YouTube channel too? So there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. And not I'm, I'm an avid read, reader, but... You know, why Why do I want to spend 20, what was that, how much was that book? That book's got to be 20 bucks. No, maybe not. <laughs> That's going to shock you that their link doesn't work. So, anyway, um, you know, you can get it on, on video, you can get it on the internet, you can get it for free through the weather service Skywarn page. Um, but Racy's, Racy's is a little more formal. Um, I don't know a whole ton of a bunch about Racy's. I just, you know, there was a Racy's group in Dallas when I lived out there. You have to have a bell fang chirp bid. Yeah, that's kind of like an entry requirement if you want to be in the YouTubers bunch. Got to put up a, a video on how to program it with chirp um, and see how many views you get. But uh, anybody out there been a part of Racy's? I mean, I. They always had practice nets, but I've I've never actually heard it act, get activated officially. So preferably two. Well, you know you got to do like one a year just to to keep it fresh because the Balfang changes so much year to year. You can get you might have a yellow one. You have to have a new video when you get the yellow one. Um, all right, another group is Aries. Now Aries is obviously you know run by the AWRL, and actually during the YouTubers Buns Ham Fest, I was going to have the uh, national, I guess he's a coordinator, manager, director, whatever they call him, of the uh, emergency response stuff, but apparently they are between directors and whatnot, so yeah, Racy's are sponsored by, you know, an official EOC, or, you know, it's got to be a government organization, you're right, Glenn. Um, 
And to be in Aries, yeah, you do have to go through some some hoops, but they're not exactly difficult hoops to go through. Um, you can go there and download all the stuff you need here. Now, as far as Aries and how much it gets used, um, that's going to be really dependent on where you are. For example, Glenn is down in Louisiana, as is evident by his name. And, yeah, I think you're right. I think they're always between directors, which made me wonder if I should apply for a job. Um, but Glenn is down in Slidell, Louisiana, where, you know, they get those hurricanes all the time. And so his Aries group may be activated more often than, you know, somebody like where I am. Here they use Aries for, you know, doing some radio stuff at a couple 5K runs kind of thing and stuff like that. Um, I don't ever hear about anybody up in the area being activated because, you know, technology's changed. So, KKUSY, Ham Radio Adventures, what's up, Chuck? Um, and yeah, if y'all haven't, head over, check Chuck's channel out. He's got a pretty good channel going over there. Let's see, I have the Baofeng videos, but my chirp videos are programming the FT3. Sorry, dude, you gotta, gotta put one up. So, oh, can't do that. Can't, can't stop teaching to be the ARRL guy, although I imagine the money's better. But, maybe not. So, let's see what else we got. Yeah, it is kind of ironic. you got to stop teaching to be a director. So, if it's kind of like in schools where you get, you know, you stop teaching to be a principal, then all of a sudden all you do is talk to the kids in trouble all the time. He said, good day. So, um, so yeah, Aries, you can get all the stuff you need on Aries. Here, they've got the in PDF or Word and whatnot. Um, you can download the whole manual. It's it's not very big. It's from 2015. And we're choking. There we go. And, you know, we know Ape doesn't like book learning, but this isn't book learning, Ape. It's on a screen, so you can do this. So, But it just goes through all the roles and whatnot. There is a there are some training courses and stuff to do. Like there's a um, emergency communications training course that they offer through the through AWRL and stuff like that too. Um, this is one that I haven't ever dealt with. Um, in fact, you know, it's one of the I just never really hear about it. I don't know if anybody in here has ever um, worked with Saturn, you know, Salvation Army Team Emergency Radio Network. Um, if you have, I'd certainly love to see it in the chat. Let me know what you think. But yeah, we can't even use that Board of Education anymore. You know, we have to re reward them for being good nowadays and hope for the best. So it doesn't look like book learning, ape. It's on a screen. See? Books are like paper things in your hands, so you're good. So Saturn has a good digital net on the weekends. So I I've never even looked at it. Where where do they run that or how do they run that to you? So, um, speaking of digital nets and networks and stuff like that, like I, I mentioned earlier, um, Glenn and I met last week and looked at DRATs. And I've got a video I'm working on now that hopefully the next several days my schedule is a little more freed up. Um, but DRATs is an interesting looking program i mean it's i enjoyed learning about it. i've still got to do some digging into it and get it there was a lot of information in about an hour in there so but then it's a salvation army group they support feeding kitchens support after storms like katrina um yeah I, from what i understand they do well i think it says it on here they do a lot of health and welfare traffic stuff like that um Smoking ape only needs VHF because the earth is flat. You're right. If the earth is flat, you've got line of sight everywhere. So, no, nah, you didn't scare me at all. That's good stuff. So, anything that you can spend time learning something new is time well spent. And unless you're smoking ape and it's in a book, then he doesn't believe in that. So, Saturn may... Although I will say, Glenn, I understand that you make some mean crawfish. So, 
I might have to take you up on that one day. Not that you offer it, I'm just kind of offering it to myself. All right, let's see. Saturn is in service to... So here's some of the stuff that they've responded to. <laughs> Oklahoma City tornado, because, you know, they've only had one. Patreon only doesn't be functioning. Uh, it was working for me earlier. It's just patreon.com slash goodgameHamRadio should get you there. So if not, I will take a look at it, but I thought it was working. But I do appreciate you asking N3JW, but... I think it's working. Let me see. Patreon.com slash good game ham radio. Yeah, just go patreon.com slash good game ham radio, and I'm not sure why it's not working, but it'll it should pop up for you there. Alright, um what was Okay, and then you've got a bunch of people get into ham radio for the whole, you know, it's the prepper community stuff. It's the people who, you know, they buy buy a Baofeng. They never really learn how to use it. They didn't watch any videos on how to program it, um, stuff like that. They're, it's there for their emergency communications kind of stuff, you know. And as someone so eloquently put earlier, they're, uh, you know, a lot of those people don't, ever get their ham radio license because you know they're not going to be in a database because <laughs> you know you're already in a database or 10 so all right so if you're one of the people who you know you signed up for ham radio your big thing is i don't know why this nexus nexus thing is here but that's okay because you're afraid of the zombie apocalypse okay all right so as entertaining as that is, I don't know how realistic it is, but that's not the only – this is the one that everybody likes to make fun of. They're like, oh, yeah, because zombies are going to come around. Like you really need to have emergency communications and stuff like that. Okay, but there's a whole lot more to this you know, as far as being a quote-unquote prepper and being prepared for things you know, as far as communications go. Um, obviously, you know, the human malware virus kind of – put that into effect with some people it let them realize you know stuff can happen and while communications didn't necessarily go down um it's an example that you know stuff that we didn't think could happen anymore can still happen so um getting prepared for stuff like that with radios is is always a good idea now if you're gonna go buy a radio i'm just gonna tell you don't be like that turd nugget that you know put out a video recently about you know, hey, there's no way I'm getting a ham radio license because I don't need to. I don't need to do all that stuff. Um, if if you're gonna buy the radio and use the radio, you need to go ahead and get your license and actually practice using it, which is kind of one of the big things for um, any of these things. You know, a lot of these things where maybe Aries is out, you know, doing a race or something like that. It's not so much that they necessarily need you for a race. It's the fact that, you know, radio operators are getting out there. They're practicing stuff like that. So, you know, that's kind of what we're we're after there. So uh, let me catch up because there's apparently something funny happening here in the chat here. We're having a ham fest October 9th and 10th. I will be surprised if you're still having that ham fest in October. Ham Lives Matter. <laughs> Protest low baud rates or something. Yeah, hit that like button. I do appreciate it. And, you know, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out. I kind of forgot to put that part at the beginning. Tried to get our races going at the fire station, but the new chief was a. Yeah, I'm for, you know, the fire chief that I, for the department I'm on is, he's a ham. But, and even the, the emergency director for the county is too. But, they just don't they just don't utilize it much um it's just i don't i guess i just i don't get the mentality of relying just on one system of communications so if his intent is removal he needs a license but you know yeah well yeah i don't know if you know what video we're talking to i'm not going to give him the benefit of 
putting him on my stream. If somebody really wants to put it in the chat, that they can. But yeah, this dude, we all watched it earlier, and it was it was one of those, you know, by golly, nobody's going to tell me to get a get a license, and you can't tell me what to do. I'm going to use my eight watt Baofeng, and nobody's going to tell me otherwise. Because and it's like, okay, so you know how to use that eight watt Baofeng? They're making me thirsty. But um, I'm just saying, get licensed and learn how to use it. Um, a lot of times people are like, well, there's – oh, <laughs> yeah. So I would play the song, but I, I'd get flagged for copyright on that. And, well, we're not going to go there. So I don't need REM or whoever that is coming after me. So where was it? Chat, chat, chat. 8 watt Baofeng is sweet. Yeah, because, you know, that's his radio and he knows how to use it. And that's all he's got for comms, apparently. So. Okay, so Clark, do clubs push readiness? Some clubs do, some clubs don't. Um, and, you know, it's kind of my thing with everything else with ham radio. It's, and it's what I, I like to tell my kids cause when they go out to club meetings. A lot of times they're going to run into those people that are just old fuddy-duddies that don't really want to do anything and they don't want to try anything new and they don't want to, you know, really explore anything that newer hams want to do. If you're interested in pushing readiness or emergency communications at your club, start asking about it. Um, if nobody ever starts it, then it never starts, obviously. So, you know, that's the best way to get it started is if no one's there, I guarantee you somebody else in the club has probably got it in the back of their mind. Um, there's there's an emergency coordinator for the county in there somewhere. You know, find that person and and see if we can't get it going. I have three eight watt Baofengs. Yeah, you know, Ape did that video on a the regular one, and I I keep forgetting how much it is. It's a I think you said like two watts or something like that coming out of the five watt UV five R something like that. But Glenn, a guy near Lake Charles Louisa got a ten thousand dollar fine from this and all his equipment coming. Because it kept interfering with emergency nets, they do enforce some of this stuff. And yeah, they do enforce some of it, but everybody hears the story about that guy on oh, what's the what's he on? Like I forget the frequency, but the dude who's been like interfering with people for like ever in a day, and uh, like seventy two hundred or something like that. And you know he does it for years and years and years, and nothing ever happens to him. And so they're like, well, if they're not going to go after this guy, then they're not going to go after me for my you know, five watt Baofeng kind of thing, but you're right. They can enforce those things if it's just the number of people out there to do it. And the ARRL has their new, or is it the FCC? But, you know, they've got that new little, what do they call them? The some kind of observer program or something. But that's not law enforcement. I mean, you know, so you just get some dude who's like, hey, that's the guy who's interfering with our net, and. You know, they don't really – hang on, i got to refill. Emergency. Oh, sorry, Tio. What's your hand? What's your question? I didn't see you click the little button on the Zoom. Although now we're not allowed to use Zoom at school. We have to use Google Meet. So – Ape, do you have a two meter amp for your Baofeng? That's a good question. Ape, do you have a two meter amp for your Baofeng? I'd be curious to see. Direct you already provided your Patreon work, so I'm on board now. Thank you, and uh, I do appreciate that. Thank you very much for that. So I'm not sure why that didn't work. I'll, I'll try to get that fixed. Don Gibbs, KK4 QAM. Old clubs in my area are old tyrants that think the ham radio only consists of 75 meters. And two meter analog, um, then you need to try to get some some new blood in there. You know that's kind of my my thing. That's you know I I try to get as much new blood in there as I can. I've got you know several kids licensed this year. I've got a few adults that jumped on board also. If there was just a shout out on the coffee for good game, so. Hang on. Yeah, if there's one thing the global malware virus or the human malware virus has done for me, it's increased my calf. Oh, hang on, I just I gotta add that to my watch. So do you think? I don't think that's two of them though. 
I don't think one of these cups is two, so I'll just keep calling it one. So that makes me 24 on the watch. So, but anyway, back to that. So yeah, whoever, who was it that was asking that question? I had a, I think it was Clark maybe. Yeah, so, you know, Clark, get in there and and start asking questions. I mean, that's the, the best way to get people interested is to start asking questions. You know, get some other folks that, you know that are licensed or maybe get them interested and try to get their licenses and go in there and you know start asking questions and trying to get things done um clubs are still run by votes just like you know the awrl a lot of people like to complain about the awrl and they don't like their the way things are run then i'm like well if you don't like it then vote people out you know nominate somebody and you know vote them all in and go from there. So, you know, the, it's it's not an instant change, but it's it's a path to change. And yeah, you know, same thing with the club. If if most of them aren't interested, then you start getting a you know you get one person interested, then that person gets another person interested, and over time you've got the votes. And then all of a sudden you can start saying, hey, let's start this program up. Uh, let's see, Glenn. Still some around who think if you don't know CW, that's yeah. We talked about that a couple weeks ago on the on the buffet here. There are a ton of people that you know if you don't know CW, you're not a real ham, and you know stuff like that. And now I'm not, I don't get that. You know, I'm I'm learning CW when I have time. My kid knows it. Um, To's kid knows it. Um, they took the Long Island CW course this you know this summer. And actually, it's like two or three courses. They they were in it pretty much from March through. Well, I think there's another one right now, but the child unit's in college class, summer college classes right now. So she can't she can't do it. She's a wee bit busy getting educated on just how how much work can be involved in a college class versus a high school class. But yeah, there's no real place anymore, in my opinion, for people who are like you know if you don't do this, if you don't do this, then you're not a real ham. And that's kind of the whole point behind the uh who i got a smile see all that all that trash talking you do leah it's she's always talking trash about me but that's okay um if there are three hams in town there will be two clubs you're right there'll be two clubs but you know what pick the one that you have the most votes for and or in common with and go from there so that's if you want them to start, then just help them get started. The Vacaville Club seems to have old and new guys. Yeah, it does. That's a there. There are a lot of clubs out there that are changing. I mean, the demographics of our club has changed significantly. I mean, you know, I've got 25 kids who got their license this year. That's 25 kids aged between the age 11 and well, when my kid got her license, she was 15. So between 11 and 15, 25 kids and three adults need a you know, they got their licenses, so that significantly changed the demographics of the club. Now, obviously, being between 11 and 14 or 15, they can't make all the club meetings, but when they show up, my club has at least been, the officers have been like, you know, like, hey, you know what? We got all these new guys in here. We need to kind of start gearing some things towards them, too, because that's new blood. You definitely don't want to chase the new blood out. If, if they come in, you don't want to chase them out. Um, Clark, we did do a a little talking on the YouTubers Bunch Club, and I think we're still going to try to make that happen. We obviously didn't get it done in time for field day, but you know, it's, I still think that would be a great thing. Um, it's just some logistical stuff to work out and whatnot. But I hear clubs like Dapota. I think a lot of I, I hear a lot of people like Dapota lately. Um, in fact, even some of the podcasts I listen to, which are some of the older guys out there that, you know, they're like, hey, this POTA stuff's taking off, and they're getting into it. So, you know, you can do – just because somebody's been a ham for 40 or 50 years doesn't automatically mean that they're not open to something new either. So you can't really judge it that – you know, we we always bust people's chops because they judge young hams and stuff like that one way. But you can't do the opposite and, like, judge somebody just because they've been licensed for 40 years and just assume that they're not going to be into something new. Hang on. I need to – Oh, you, th you saw that video, did you? So, I, I think it's on um, oh, what's that guy's name that has that channel? To you, uh, I, f I forget where I saw that. 
Maybe you can drop a link in there for him. Um, yeah, Hamalert's kind of cool. I You have to make sure you have it formatted right. I had several of the YouTubers bunch guys on my Hamalert there, and my phone kept going off at like 2 and 3 in the morning because, you know, people like Josh and stuff out on the West Coast are, well, they're night owls anyway, and I'm not so much, but, oh, is that where it was? Yeah, you got a link to him? Drop it in there. Um, I'm sure there is somewhere, Clark. If not, I'm sure that, yeah, it's, it's not hard. I mean, it's, well, kind of off topic here, but let's see. I just need to watch a video on how to use it now. I don't think there's much to using it. Damn. Yep, everybody, go. Go ahead and click that. You learn all about how to start a uh, how to start a club. So, all right. So I got to start adding. Totally unrelated to anything. Let me change my window. See if we can make this go. By zombies. It's gonna wash out. All right, so there's that. Old brain just has a hard time with anything. All right, click the little dealy bopper there. That's the little hamburger, whatever you want to call it. Hit triggers. And then hit that little plus to add a trigger. I might be able to get a little closer. Hang on. I think that's all this camera's got. Alright, so let me go back so you can see where that was. So you hit triggers, then hit that little plus right there. Then you add a condition, and you can say, I'm looking for, this is going to be fun, that call sign. And then we want to list it, so if we want K8. MRD, and then you separate them with commas. So I'm going to regret this later. KM9G, KK6USY. You can just add these things in here. And here you go, Don. I'll throw you in there just because the call sign's on the screen. KK4QAM. And you can have it email you or buzz the app or whatever. Um, I'm just going to say email because that way it doesn't wake me up all night. And so now it's going to email me anytime that it catches those call signs on the spot. And uh, yeah, you can you can change some of the settings in there. Remember to turn off email and turn on. Yeah, well, I don't want it waking me up all night. But yeah, you're right. You can You can turn it on so it just alerts the apps. Or do the little notification, but that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. So, and I'll, I'll set it back up later. I had them all in there, and then I got annoyed, took them out one night because I got in trouble. So, but I'm kind of a backwards kind of dude, Mike. So, all right, let's see what else we missed here. My hammerlet only goes off when I'm at work. I haven't had to go. Well, actually, I'm working now that. Summers here. I teach school and I didn't have to work at the end of the school year, but now all of a sudden school's out and I'm working again. I don't. We'll just go with that. So, all right. So let's see. Chat, chat, chat. I remember I got the award for breaking DMR. It's not as easy for us. We're simple folk. How many here have heard about the Ham Shack Hotline? I have not heard of the Ham Shack Hotline. Glenn, throw it out there. What is it? Remember to turn off the... Yeah, I'll already do that. So, um, if coffee's not just at night. Coffee's pretty much 24-7. Oh, Don, you've always been somebody. It's just now you're famous. YouTube famous anyway on my Whopping the Huge channel here. But, alright, I put Mike in for now. He does the most. Yeah, Mike... Mike gets out there. He's pretty potable. 
So, yeah. So, Glenn, tell us about the Hamshack Hotline if you if you haven't been to throw it in the in the chat there. I guess I could I could Google it, but I guess I I'm not sharing that screen. I have to be careful how I Google things because you never know. Hamshack Hotline. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show this screen. Is that why you had that phone on your desk, Glenn? Yeah, I noticed you had like a, like an actual real life landline phone, and I was like, what in the world? Hang on, where's my? All right, Hamshack Hotline. So it's got little numbers. Let's see, is a private telephone network for hams by ham radio operators. You must be ooh, a ham, not an ham. Let's not get too much grammar Nazism happening here. To to get a sign for an HH telephone number, there's strictly a non-commercial use clause in the operating rules, so you never have to get telemarketers or put it on the phone line. The best part of all this is it's totally free, so you have to buy a phone with no monthly call. I've never heard of this, so I'm going to have to do some, some looking. I mean, I'm... I noticed your your phone on the desk, and I meant to ask you about it, but we were kind of crunched for time, and I was I was busy trying to catch all what you had to say about DRAT. So, created with the thinking of, is, do they mean ecom or do they mean mcom? It makes a great backup device for emergency communications. It works wherever you have internet. All you need is cable fiber, even an internet mesh network. So it's 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 reliant on on the internet. So next week's buffet is dessert, man. It's it's already in the works, and you won't want to miss that one. We're we're having some dessert. It's gonna be be good stuff. So I'm on TV now. I'm a rock star. So anyway, Hamshack Hotline. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, Glenn, I'm have to do some learning about it. I I don't have room on my bench here for. Well, I guess I would if I cleaned up some of this mess, but we don't want to do that. Then my wife would grow to expect it to stay that way. So, anybody else with any other MCOM stuff that they like to do? Like I said, you know, if you're one of those folks that are in it for the prepping standpoint and stuff like that, you know, you, you got to actually practice that stuff. You can't just um buy a bunch of radios and expect it to work and you know when the stromboli hits the fan we have to say stromboli and not not the other one because you know it's that kind of kind of show uh adventures i bet i can make your ham alert go off yeah it, everybody go ahead and start spotting k at mrd and, and blow up chuck's ham alert oh now it's for the Buffet videos. Yep. The uh, next week on the buffet is dessert. Um, I want to go ahead and point out before we get too far or too close to being done. If you go to the website we use for the YouTubers Hamfest, which is YouTubersHamfest.com, um, we've got a weekly live stream schedule, and I need to go in there and put my time in there. Um, but you know, these are all the guys that are in the YouTubers bunch that live stream. Some of them like you know do it every day. Some of them do or every week rather, some do first and third Sundays. Um, like Ham Radio 2.0 is doing a bunch of lunchtime stuff right now. Um, so head over there and go ahead and make sure you're subbed to all these guys and, and catch their streams too. Some of them are at easier times than others to catch for some of us, but you know we're all over the place as far as time. So uh, it's, it's going to light up my uh, email, not my phone. So I don't get the junk mail alerts on my phone. I just get the priority ones. They even have connections to on-air repeaters. So, yeah, I've never heard of that, Glenn. That's, had I known that's what that was, I would have, you know, asked to try it out. Just it would be like the, uh, 
the hardwired red phone on the president's desk or something. Which is, I read a story when I was doing some looking for this video about when a 9/11 happened and the mayor of New York City or whatever had to call somebody. And apparently, they had a hardwired red phone that, like, from governor's office to governor's office or something. But uh, they picked it up to actually use it after 9/11. And apparently, the line had been cut for years and they didn't know. So WJ6F, you got a stream and smoking it. I thought you don't know. I guess you've just zoomed in on other people. So yep, uh, we got we we're getting that going, Abe. So yep, that's another video, Glenn. I'll have to try that out. So, but that's about that. Unless somebody's got something else in there, how about using APRS connected weather stations in areas of cloudy lunch weather where there may not be enough people to report? All right, I'm gonna read that twice because I'm slow. How about using APRS and connected weather stations? Yeah, I mean, that I could see that. That'd be a good idea, Don. Um, I'd probably say something that would get me banned the first time I tried it. I doubt it. I mean, it, it's not. It's. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it takes some getting used to, but it's no big deal. So... Besides, I mean, Bob K6 UDA, he's he's not banned. He's got a swear jar, but he's not banned. A swear barrel. So, um, I don't even use a video capture card. I just I've got the it's just a camera USB into my PC. I mean, Streamlabs every now and then drops it, and I have to re-add it, but it's never happened during a stream. So I could have walked it here by now. Yeah, but, you know, it'll be like my mother-in-law's shoes she ordered from a store that one day, that you know, the day after purchase it was 40 miles away, and then it, like, went to Florida and then Oregon or something, and it took, like, a week and a half to make that 40-mile trip. So, don't worry, we're not going to grammar Nazi you too bad. But, all right, well, that's about that, y'all. Um, any other ideas or things that you use for MCOM, drop it down below. Um, if you get nothing else from it, just remember... Um, when you do go into a situation and you're helping out and volunteering, you know, you, you do need to make sure that you're civil and, you know, don't don't be like that turd nugget who I, I, who's out there saying I'm not going to get a, a license. Don't be like that guy who's, you know, I shouldn't have to justify my existence to anybody because, you know, if, if you want to actually be a part of it, then you have to make yourself needed. And so if – Everything they do, you know, everything you do with them, they're constantly fighting your attitude. Then don't expect to be needed. People are really good at finding, all, you know, ways around that kind of stuff. Um, dude, you don't need to pay 250 bucks for a webcam, dude. I, I, I bought this. I don't even know what brand it is. It's some Chinese DV camera, and you know, I plugged it into the USB, and it works. So. I wouldn't say it's the best thing in the world, but, you know, I mean, I'm here. So, but anyway, that's that, y'all. Um, drop those comments below. Like I said, hit like, hit subscribe. We do appreciate it. And y'all take care, and we hope to see you on the air. 7-3.